All right, we've got this Yamaha Grizzly 700 up on the lift now. Today we're actually gonna replace the stator on it. We've got an issue with the stator, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this cover, replace the stator. I'm gonna show you that entire process. Also along the way, we're gonna have to replace oil filter, uh, obviously engine oil, coolant line that runs in here, that's gonna need to be replaced as well. So make sure if you've got any questions or comments, make sure and leave those below. If there's any tools, specialty tools that are needed, I'm gonna leave those links below. We've got a bunch of other videos that we've done on this Grizzly 700. You can see we've got the front end apart at this point. Uh, we've done brake pads, we've done axles, we've replaced CV boots, so make sure you check those videos out as well. Uh, if the video's been helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up. I appreciate any feedback from you guys. Thanks a lot. Today to stay out of your way when we're doing this video but the problem is most of the work is going to need to be done right here there's not really a good angle for the camera to sit so I've lifted the seat up I pulled the uh, pin out of here the plastic uh, rivet up here by the, in front of the seat as well as up by the dash now we're just going to take and lift this panel off that's going to give us a little more light uh, in the area that we're working as well as uh, allow us to get to some of the bolts that were going to be a little more challenging You've got coolant line running into your water pump area here. We've got your impeller behind this cover. We're going to go ahead and drain that coolant at this point. Unfortunately, because of the abuse that this four-wheeler's been through, all of the bolts that hold this skid plate on are rusted and rounded off, so we're not going to be able to pull this skid plate. It's just going to make a mess out of the skid plate um, is what's going to end up happening, and uh, so we're just going to have to power our shit off real good after we're finished with this project. But we may end up having oil everywhere. We're going to drain the engine oil. That is a 17. We're going to pull the oil filter, which is directly in front of your magneto here. We've got an oil leak, uh, what's looking like underneath this uh, inspection cap here. This is the inspection cap. This is where you turn your engine over to find top dead center, uh, adjust the valve, stuff like that. So I'm thinking we've got a bad O-ring here, so we're going to replace that at the same time. We've got a gasket that we're going to replace here. So just a couple things that we're going to work on. I'm going to walk through that process, not necessarily going to talk through the entire thing, uh, but I wanted to show you kind of a brief overview of what we're working on today. We've got a foot well that would normally sit here. We've got that pulled. That's just time consuming. It's got these little Allen headed bolts with 10 millimeter nuts on the back, or maybe they're eight millimeter nuts on the back. And those can be a bit of a challenge. So I didn't uh, start the video while we removed all of that, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those, and then we've got the four that mount it onto this bottom brace here for your footwell. So we've got that panel removed. Again, we've got the front uh, wheel off. It does allow us to get in here a little bit easier, uh, but we've got the front wheel off. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that. Uh, we've had a couple other components that we were replacing up front there. Um, that's why we've got the front wheel off. I thought I would just leave it off so you could see a little bit better. Here's a little um, a holder that's right here we're gonna have to remove that eight millimeter to remove that holder sometimes they fold over this is not the case on this one all right we've got our engine oil draining at this point i'm going to grab an eight millimeter we've got these brake line clips that are kind of going to be in the way here they're supposed to be attached to something but they're not attached to anything at this point so i think we can just remove them just ended up sliding them down oh they're supposed to be mounted up to this point here to keep this from flexing so doing a great job as you can see there. All right, what I like to do in a case like this is because we're gonna have to remove all of these bolts, obviously I'm gonna start at one point, which I'm gonna start at the top. Because they may be different lengths, I'm gonna keep them in order as I remove them. So starting there, we're gonna go clockwise. So far they've all been the same size. My guess is one of these water pump bolts actually Runs all the way through. Okay, there's a longer one. We've already got coolant dripping there. So we're, this is actually the plug here that if we remove this, we're going to have coolant spraying out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen up that plug. It is going to it is going to make a mess. I'm going to keep going around the trickle here. I'm afraid of that. We got some in behind these coolant lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, remove the drain plug so that coolant will drain into our drain pan, then I'm gonna go ahead and pull these hoses. Otherwise, we're gonna have coolant spraying all over the place. All right, I'm gonna pull this. I'm gonna set this bucket in front of this. Not a lot has come out, but we do need to uh, pull the radiator cap and then fluid will spray out. 
So I've got the panel removed up front. I'm gonna go ahead and break that radiator cap free while I'm holding the bucket underneath it here. I think we're gonna have coolant spraying all over. Yep. Now coolant is drained or draining and we'll go ahead, we'll pull those hoses off at this point. I'm gonna use larger pliers, that way we can get on here a little bit easier. I'm gonna slide that clamp back. So that's removed. I see one Phillips through to remove that other clamp. Might be a little more of a challenge where it's at. Might be harder to get pressure on to pull this clamp off or this boot off. Okay. That clamp is off, that boot is off. You go ahead and keep removing these eight millimeters. So far, the only longer one has been the one that's directly underneath of the water pump. Okay, so I was hoping by pulling this boot off here, uh, we could get to uh, all the bolts, but we're actually gonna have to flip this hose up and we're gonna have to remove this. Okay, we've got a five millimeter Allen to remove this hose and we do have to remove it. I was thinking maybe we'd get away with not having to remove this, but there's an eight millimeter bolt behind it. So we're definitely gonna have to remove it. You could maybe get a wrench in there and get that bolt out, but we're already this far into it. Let's not make it any more difficult on us. Okay, that bolt is out of there. We're gonna inspect this O-ring. Wish I had ordered one of these. Might still need to get one of those. Okay, now we're able to get in behind there, get our last eight millimeter bolt. Same size as the rest of them. So now we'll just be able to, it looks like, slide this cover off. Being careful, I'm not sure what's in behind here exactly. As far as we're definitely gonna have a, a stator or a starter drive. Our gasket's holding us up here. Okay, so we've got our starter that comes in here. We've got our starter drive. We have a, got a couple gears. Uh, we just wanna be real careful going back together with these gears, but get put in place. So there is the gears. I'm not sure if you can see that from your camera angle. The cover's off. I'm gonna do my best to kind of flip this upside down for you to see. Now again, this is upside down. So we've got a couple idler gears. Uh, we've got a gear, a starter gear limiter here. Here's our stator that's getting replaced. Here's our oil pump. Uh, shaft that runs through. Here's our pulser. All of that will get replaced at the same time. We're going to go up and we're going to remove the connector for this stator. We're going to be able to put this entire thing on the bench and uh, inspect it, look at it, work on it, remove that stator while it's on the bench rather than on this dirty four-wheeler. It'll be really hard for you to see where these stator wires are, but they're actually, the other set of wires actually run. So there's one connector that's directly underneath of your throttle body. That's a three pin connector. That's this one here. No, sorry, it's a two pin connector. Looks like a brown and a, a gray or light blue wire. But then the other connector, I think we've got to remove the right side panel to get to. Going to the right side of the four wheeler now, I'm gonna show you exactly where that wire, the other wire is pulled from. On the right hand side is uh, behind, sorry, in front of, your rear tire is gonna be your regulated rectifier. So we just lifted this panel up here and uh, we unconnected uh, the regulated rectifier connector. It's a three wire, all white, and it's gonna run over to your stator assembly. So that's your regulated rectifier. It's kinda of hard to get it good. This connector goes right there if you can see that. So it's kind of hidden behind the rear fender, also behind the panel is gonna be the easiest way to get to it. So I'm gonna take and now run that wire through uh, underneath of the fuel tank 
and then we'll be able to take and remove this stator cover uh, as well as the stator. All right, we're gonna take the stator now, put it on the bench. That way we can clean this gasket surface up and then um, go ahead and replace that stator as well. We've got the stator here in hand. First thing I like to do is just verify the ends match up, make sure uh, cables are the same lengths or the wires are. Um, that way we don't get the entire thing installed on here and find out uh, it's not quite the right thing. Um, looks like both those ends are gonna all be the same. Everything matches up. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull these Allen bolts off all the way around. It's a four millimeter and I loosen them all up here just to save a little bit of time. Now we're gonna grab our impact and I'm gonna show you how to loosen those. All right, so we've got three actually holding the stator on. We've got two holding the pulser on. And then we've got a cable holder here, a wire holder. So those are all loosened. See, we've got thread lock on all of these. We're gonna go ahead and do that when we go back together. I'm gonna have to remove that idler gear to pull your pulser off. Okay, so these are all able to be pulled out of there. And in that position there. So I'm gonna take the new one, just set it directly back inside of here. Make sure everything's lined up. Our pulser is gonna go back onto, uh, let's see, maybe like, like so. Line these holes up. Okay, we'll thread lock all of these. Just takes a little drop. These are such tiny little bolts. I've already thread locked these. Just make sure our wire's held down. We put this over top of everything and that holds the wires in place and it keeps the wires out of the flywheel, which is the main thing. That flywheel's spinning around so fast, you never want those wires to get caught in the flywheel. Okay, we're gonna drop this idler back in and then we're gonna put this back into the four wheeler. We've got the gasket all cleaned up. I've showed you how to do that on a handful a handful of other videos. We've got a gasket scraper here. I'll show you what it looks like. Super handy tool when it comes to cleaning up gaskets. So just scrape them off of there. You can push or pull whatever fits your fancy. We're going to clean all this up. I like to put a little bit of sealant on this um, this connector here. It's not really a connector, but it's a, a, uh, a rubber plug. Um, that way it doesn't leak oil out of that area or leak water in. So otherwise we're going to throw it up on the uh, four wheeler here and reinstall it. Okay, putting our stator actually on the four wheeler, then we're going to line this gasket up. And what's really nice, you've got two dowel pins here at the top and the bottom right here by your starter. So, what you can actually do is slide that gasket on and then slide it on the bottom. Obviously, we've already cleaned up all this gasket surface, and uh, that's going to hold that gasket in place while we uh, put the stator on. Now, you want to be really careful that doesn't fold down or bend down uh, when you're putting it back together. Sometimes you can just take a little dab of um, grease or something and put that on one of the surface areas um, so that it holds into place. I'm gonna take now and just real carefully set this on there. I have some a magnetic pull, um, so you just wanna be careful when we're putting it on here that it holds into place. We're going to try to line this up. I'm going to keep these gears in place there. They're going to go, obviously, in these two uh, ports there. And then also we're going to have our water pump shaft that lines up with our oil pump shaft there. So just being really careful. It just doesn't jerk this forward, which it has a tendency of doing. Double checking everything before we go back together. And then I'm going to try to hold it away from the case because I'd like it to sit in place before it goes and smashes that gasket. Just don't wanna have any issues with that gasket. We don't have another one in stock. A couple things we're trying to line up here is that 
number one, that starter. Uh, sometimes those gears don't line up like they should. The other thing is that oil pump and that water pump shaft. So it looks like everything's seated properly. I like to make sure I can see that gasket through the, around the outside there. That means we're seated in that position. Then I'm gonna put a handful of these bolts in. And again, remember, we didn't, um, all of these were the same size except for the two in the oil pump area. One more bolt here in front of the water pump. That's a tough one to get to and see. And then we've got our drain bolt. That's the drain for the coolant. I pulled this plug off of there. You guys saw in the first video, uh, we, we had some oil leakage around this area. What ended up happening was that cap was actually cracked. So I've got to order one of those caps. Okay, now we've got our coolant line. Okay, we'll slip this coolant line on. And we've got this line here. Try to keep as much of that dirt and debris out as we can. I gotta grab a Phillips for that other clamp. This is just a plier style clamp. Right, that's all buckled up there. We've got to get our wires uh, in place. I want to make sure to keep that off the exhaust. I also want to keep that out of the gear shift range there. Yeah, I'm going to throw our drain plug in just so that's not something that we forget uh, moving forward here. Obviously, we've got our cap here that we're waiting on. I actually took a little sealant just to seal it up just so we could um, get it off the lift here. We'll, um, we'll throw that cap on, move it around. Um, until we get that cap to come in here in a couple days. It'll be something pretty easy that we can just throw on. So this ran that, that three pin connector to the other side, keeping that off of the motor uh, directly, keeping that out of the drive shaft, also keeping it out of the shift mechanism here, um, and then nowhere close to the exhaust. That's a guaranteed uh, melt job right there. So I've actually got the... Um, wire holder here that's going to keep it from flopping down into the dipstick area. I'm going to zip tie it up here farther um, to another wire and that's going to hold it up. So uh, next thing we're going to do again throw that drain plug in there. We, we need to add coolant obviously add oil. We've changed the oil filter and then we will be finished with this uh, stator here. I think I already said this but I ran that three pin connector over to the regulator rectifier. Yeah, I did say that. So that's it for the stator uh, replacement on a Yamaha Grizzly 700. If you guys got questions or comments, make sure and let me know those in the comment section below. Uh, again, um, adding coolant, adding oil, all of that all be done. I'm not gonna say anything else on the video, just gonna run through that uh, order there. So.